So good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Neetra Aiskanu. I'm doing my DRMD residency in Manipal Hospital, Bangalore, under Dr. Karthik Nagesh. I'll be starting the OFTI presentation for today's session. So coming to case number one, we have a primary gravid mother who came with leak TV and severe oligohydromyos. She came in labor at 30 minutes of gestation. Antinatal steroids would not be given as she came in a labor. Emergency LSCS was done in view of non-reassuring NST. Baby did well, baby cried at birth. First discussion will be, how do we do cord management in this baby who is born at 31 weeks who cried at birth? So, uh, can anyone take this question? Yeah, Dr. Pragnya, please go ahead. So we can do delayed cord clamping in the, in the situation as the baby has cried and uh, everything is normal, then we can do go ahead with the delayed cord clamp cord, okay. uh, delayed clamp cord. Good. Uh, so it's more important as we discussed last week for a premature baby as they have a relatively uh, lower circulating volume and they are at risk of hemodynamic uh, stress as well. So we can go to the next point. Yes, sir. So the answer rightly said uh, was... Uh, I yes, think we'll we finish out the four points so rather than going back and forth. Okay, fine. Sir. So coming to the second question. No, no, uh, I mean, you have more points in the first question, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. No, uh, the first question has four sub-questions. There are more questions left, sir. So you're going to go step by step for each question. Okay, then you proceed as you want. That's fine. Yes, sir. I yes, thought you're going to put the four so questions let, first I and then discuss the answers. Okay. And no, sir. One by one. One question I'll put and then we'll discuss regarding the question. Should we do this you way or should I take the second question? No, you can sir? discuss the answer if you have put the slides that way because uh, when we shared it wasn't clear. Okay, you go okay. ahead. Sir. Okay, sir. So uh, the answer was clear. Yes, we can do delayed cord clamping in this baby who is born at 31 weeks of gestation. The recent NRT says vigorous term and preterm babies, delayed cord clamping should be done at least for 30 to 60 seconds. But then it also mentioned that the babies who are born at less than 32 weeks should be delivered in polythene plastic wraps and DCC should be done if they are vigorous. Uh, NRP does not mention the lower gestational age cutoff for this. So there is ILCOD uh, recommendation, which is updated in 2023. This gives the gestational age based cutoff for the delayed cord camp camping. These recommendations are based on systemic review and uh, pairwise meta-analysis with individual participant data on cord management in preterm babies. This was based on the RCT, which compared different umbilical cord management strategies. Three interventions were studied in the analysis, delayed cord clamping, immediate cord clamping, and umbilical cord milking. So the comparison was made between DCC, ICC, umbilical cord milking, and DCC, umbilical cord milking versus ICC. And the outcomes were studied. The outcomes were short-term and long-term. The short-term outcomes studied were mortality, transition requirement, ROP, DPD, MEC, and IPA. So based on the analysis, it was uh, observed that babies who were managed by DCC did better in short-term outcomes as well as long-term outcomes, especially the immediate short-term outcomes like mortality and transfusion requirement as compared to the babies who were managed by umbilical cord making and uh, immediate cord clamping. So DCC was a uh, 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 more favored management as compared to umbilical cord management and ICC. Between the second two groups, that is umbilical cord milking and immediate cord clamping, uh, the results were favoring umbilical cord milking in terms of short-term management, like mortality and transfusion requirement. But the other uh, morbidities like ROP, BPD, NEC, and IVH were not different in the two groups. So the recommendation was made that for any given gestational age, DCC should be preferred over umbilical cord milking we should in turn be prepared, uh, preferred over in immediate cord clamping. So these are the recommendations given. Any baby who is born less than 37 weeks and not requiring uh, any resuscitation should be managed by DCC at least for 60 seconds. This has strong recommendation with high certainty of evidence. The second group that is 28 to 37 weeks, DCC is still preferred. But if for some reason we are not able to do any uh, DCC, 
for example, if the baby is not vigorous, the baby has very severe respiratory distress, then BCC should be deferred and at least umbilical cord milking should be done. This improves the hematological outcomes of these babies. And the last group study, that is less than 28 weeks, the recommendation is only for umbilic, uh, intact cord milking because the number of studied, uh, studies uh, which uh, compared BCC and immediate cord clamping versus intact cord milking were less. So the recommendation was possible only for intact cord milking, that too with the uh, uh, weak grade of recommendation and low certainty. So to summarize, all babies less than 37 weeks, irrespective of gestational age, BCC is better. Between 28 to 20, uh, 36 weeks, BCC is still uh, okay, uh, Netra, better. Just one but, second, uh, for the less yeah. than 28 weeks, cord milking is not recommended. It should be delayed cord clamping only. The, Intact cord milking not recommended is based on Dr. Katharia's study. So they should do only delayed cord clamping. So maybe this okay. is a typo. We will double check that. It's fine. And uh, there was a question from uh, Jenny on uh, what if the baby doesn't cry. So as we discussed last time, I mean, if the extreme premature babies, we don't expect them to cry. So if the baby has a good cord pulsation, requ request the obstetric team to be familiar with the, uh, feeling the cord pulsation. And if the cord pulsation is good, you still wait uh, for the 30 to 60 seconds in the small premature babies as well who don't cry. This is different from fetal distress asphyxia setting. There, the recommendation is uh, consider cord milking if you it's possible, uh, but delayed cord clamping is not recommended in asphyxia setting. So asphyxia setting not crying is different from a premature baby who is not crying because of the neurologic immaturity. So we should uh, educate our obstetric team to differentiate that. The cord pulsation is a good indicator. If there is fetal bradycardia, it would show it will be a sign of fetal I mean, uh, intolerance and so on. So that is one point. And Dr. Pragnya had asked to share this. Uh, Jyoti usually shares the slides, but the article part, I think you have the AAP recommendation as well, which came up. So we can yes, discuss sir. that. Okay, go ahead with the next point. Okay, let's go to the second question of the scenario. So the baby cried at birth and we did the delayed cord clamping for 60 seconds. Now the baby has developed labored breathing at three minutes of flight. What is the recommended respiratory support which is given at this age? And what is the FIO2 and P to be started with? Can anyone take the question? Dr. Talib, you wanted to answer earlier. You want to answer this one? Uh, yes, I, I will start with the PIP or an IPPV. PIP, you mean? And what oh. FIO2 do you start with? Uh, I will start with uh, 30, 30. Okay, that's when there's a premature baby, you would start with 30. Dr. Pragnya, was it you who was trying to speak? Sir, it is answered. We will start with P, double E, P with 5. Increase according to age, the age of the baby, and I will increase gradually. Okay. I so think in this case, acceptable uh, saturation will be uh, around uh, 7 to 5, 8. Okay, let's speak one at a time so that there is no uh, overlap of the voices. Okay, go hand up, Netra. Yes. So the, the answer was correct. We have to start CR with the TP stress data starting at the FIO2 of 30% and TP of 5 mmg with a good seal of face mask. As the baby in this scenario is 31 weaker, it is recommended to start between 21 to 30% FIO2 and TP of 5 mmg. Okay. Go so, what will be the, the primary second. determinant, uh, Dr. Netra, for whether to start this baby on CPAP or to start IPPV? So, this baby has a labored breathing. Uh, you will start uh, IPPV, uh, IPPV if the baby had uh, poor respiratory efforts or heart rate of less than 100, even with the initial steps. So, since the baby has heart rate of more than 100 and the good efforts, and the baby has labored breathing, we would like to start with the CPAP with the TP stress status, sir. Okay, so labored breathing, how do you define? So, this baby is of uh, 31 weeks gestation. No, no, I mean to say when you say you're not talking of respiratory distress here, isn't it? You're talking of labored breathing. Respiratory so, how would you distress. differentiate labored breathing, which is due to poor effort, from labored breathing? So, you have to say that you're looking at the yes. effort of the baby. So, if the yes. effort is good, the baby can have labored breathing with gasping is also called as labored breathing, but it's not a regular effort. So if it looks like baby is in distress, you would start CPAP. If the baby has poor effort, you would start IPPV. Okay. So the word yes. labored breathing is usually non-specific. You have to categorize it. Like you'll come later with the Downey score. So we'll discuss that as well. So labored breathing can mean gasping as well. 
okay the effort of breathing is uh, increased but it can be distress where you would consider cpap in this situation i agree with you i mean cpap is fine provided the baby tolerates if you feel the heart rate is going down with the cpap or the uh, baby is worsening you can move on to ipvv okay thank okay, you so going to the third question of the first scenario so uh, we started the review on cpap and shifted to nicu with a trunkwood incubator and cpap in c2 in in nicu we observed the baby during observation uh, the res uh, respiratory distress was noticed to be increasing while on cpap uh, the silverman anderson score at this point was 7 by 10 with a fo2 of 50% so we did an x ray to uh, know the underlying cause this was the x ray taken can anyone interpret this x ray i think dr shefali is speaking please mm -hmm. others uh, mute yourselves dr shefali please speak the x ray showing severe rda sir and uh, we should go uh, we should uh, give uh, surfactant therapy for this child for specific treatment sir okay just for a quick overview of x ray review can you just uh, read this x ray sir uh, x ray is uh, uh, well centralized well exposed and uh, it's showing uh, uh, around 7 uh, uh, intercostal spaces and uh, uh, full reticular granular patterns are there to, and it's covering entire uh, uh, lung shadow so it's suggest uh, severe rda sir is it a ap film or a pa film sir ap film in a newborn uh, where is the plate plate is on the back sir okay and uh, this is almost like a white out lung isn't it as someone yes, has commented sir. in the group as well so the reticular granularity is so dense that it becomes a white out and you mentioned about the positioning so ideally we should have a little more of the neck and things covered as well the clavicle is not visible here and uh, we are assuming it's well positioned but you need to see the clavicle as well to comment and also the neck is slightly turned probably any lines in this baby lines or tubes mm, no sir okay. so ideally we should have a feeding visible. tube as soon as the baby is admitted on cpap not visible so, yeah in this case it's not visible and some units are still using the feeding tubes which are not fully radio opaque so that's another thing to look at because the feeding tube position is very important for two reasons for decompression of the stomach as well as to make sure that uh, i mean the tube is decompressing and the if you do start we often feed the baby so if you are starting tube feeds there is a risk of aspiration if it's a high tube and uh, we will go on to uh, dr neelima do you want to comment on the surfactant therapy in this baby would you go for uh, insure or would you go for uh, lisa what would you consider or would you keep the baby intubated dr neelima you can unmute yourself uh, sir uh, we can keep the baby uh, on uh, on the uh, cpap only Okay. and can give the lisa okay either lisa or insure uh, if it is done properly we can give the insure and keep the baby on cpap only okay if your unit as dr karthik was explaining last time you can consider insure if your unit is fully versed with that dr karthik you want to comment uh, on the lisa versus insure again uh, <clears throat> see as uh, as i mentioned earlier also um, lisa takes a little learning curve and it is requiring a little more practice but most of the times uh, um, you would not go wrong very much wrong if you do insure but more and more towards uh, uh, more of your training or something should practice more of lisa that's what i would say it's much more easier and uh, many of my residents have seen lisa work so smoothly and nicely it's probably um, uh, i think much more easier to do or once you get the knack of doing that hmm? Yes, Dr. Ranganath has said depends on the unit protocol, and as Dr. Karthik said, you always need to make a start. So think about it, think actively, and during the day, for example, if all of you are around, start doing the Lisa, so you can point out errors and correct each other. During the night, you can stick with Insure if you are comfortable. But remember that the ideal way of Insure is to give uh, intubate, surfactant, and extubate. Don't keep the baby with the tube in. So that is where most of us uh, go wrong, and. Uh, one of the questions is grade 3 versus grade 4 so you can still see some lung marking so this would be grade 3 and the volume is not too bad grade 4 will be more closed down but it's borderline grade 3 to 4 you can say dr priyanka please go ahead unmute yourself and speak dr priyanka can you unmute yes sir am i audible sir yeah please go ahead 
sir i was just saying if you are using ensure that uh, uh, whatever volume we have made by cpap even after one half an hour that will be lost so i think it will be better to use lisa in this case see you are going to uh, drip the surfactant into the airway in any case and you know that we have the nasal cannula for cpap in most of the units now ram cannula or similar so you are going to consider your uh, continue your surfactant treatment and this is an already recruited lung on cpap the fao2 is high and you decided to give the surfactant so uh, and uh, you know the surfactant delivery is quicker the uh, process is quicker with insure as well if uh, you are experienced intubator and uh, one to two liquids depending on the volume you are giving and whether you are giving cure or for servant so uh the closure of the lung volume matters more in the initial stage before the lung is recruited if you are doing it in the labor room uh of course the studies are showing a better evidence with uh, lisa compared to insure and part of the reason is as dr karthik was mentioning in his earlier talk i mean uh, you are welcome to watch the recording of his uh, lecture on uh, surfactant therapy as well it will come later in the module as well so basically uh if uh, insure previously the definition was up to 2 hours you can keep the baby intubated and any time of length with positive breath through the tube is not good for the baby that's why i keep stressing that if you are doing insure and you decide to extubate the baby based on the overall picture remove the tube quickly so the effect will not be much different in these cases so you don't need to be scared to use insure and uh, from the first batch i mean uh, one of the colleagues had just shared that he did his first lisa in his unit last week it shared the x-rays in the other group i can post it in your group as well so there is always a start i mean if you have the catheter if you don't have the catheter you have the feeding tube but you do need the megills forceps if you are using a feeding tube you need some expertise in the tiniest babies it's not technically easy to use a megills forceps in the small mouth of the baby so you have to look at all those factors uh, dr ranganath uh, dr karthik said all of you are very expert at uh, doing it do you want to share your feedback hi sir uh Uh, we are learning sir right? like uh, the other day we did for a 24 weeker uh, in fact karthik sir himself did so i'm un- like not familiar to lisa myself so still learning uh, we are doing it sir uh, ensure i'm more comfortable but uh, lisa uh, frankly telling i need to uh, learn little uh, bit also yes dr deepika i also agree that lisa needs expertise especially in the tiniest babies and obviously you don't need to be bogged down by it but don't have a mind block either i mean if you can't do it immediately don't worry ensure with the tube removed immediately works well but if you have any concerns you can go ahead so uh, we'll move to the 